Hello everyone, this is Huyen Cheng from Vistar Research. Today I'm going to talk about our recent work about non-local neural networks uh, for recommended systems. This is the agenda for our presentations. And the first I'm going to introduce some of the background about the GNN and also the Papara graph in the recommended systems. And in the second part, we are going to propose our new framework called the non-local GNN. The goal is to capture the non-range uh, dependencies in the graph. And in the third part, I'm going to show the experiments. Many real-world applications can be represented by the graph. For example, in our visa transaction networks, uh, we have a lot of entities in the graph, like the customers, merchants, acquirers, and the links between the relationship uh, between this kind of node. So for example, uh, when a customer purchases something, in the world mass, we can have a transaction record to show the relationship between these customers and merchants. And for the merchants, we also have a different type of a relationship, like different categories to represent the MCC of these merchants. And the second example is the social network. So in a social network like the Facebook or Twitter, each nodes represent the users, and then age represent the friendships between the nodes. And the other case, very common case, is the recommended systems. Or we have a users are items. The relationship between the users and items can be represented by a Papata graph. In this world, we have many focus on the Papata graph recommended systems. In the Papata recommended systems, we have a users and items, uh, which can be represented by a user item rating matrix. For example, in, in here is a matrix to represent the relationship uh, between the users and the items. And if a uh, user purchases an item before, we just put an age here. And if there's no relationship between the user and item, we just put a question mark. And our goal is trying to predict if these users have some potential candidate items uh, which they are interested in. Uh, in terms of a graph, we can just uh, we can just represent these measures as a graph, as a graph. Uh, in the left hand side, we have a user nodes. In the right hand side, we have item nodes. And the age between the user and item represent the user preference uh, for these items. One benefit for representing the user items into a Papara graph is that we can capture the high order relationship, uh, which can now obvious in the user item rating matrix. For example, uh, in this Papara graph, we might try to answer the uh, questions. So why user one like the item five? So in the, this Papara graph, we can observe that the user, user one purchase uh, item three, before an item three is have been purchased by the user three and user three purchased item five. So we might have a high probability to show that user one might be interested in the item five uh, by this kind of the high order path. And finally we can capture the relationship between the user one and the item five by another two high order path. For example, the user one will reach to the item four, item four will be reached by the user two and user to purchase item four, item five before. So by using this kind of the three part high order relationship, then we can predict that the user might be user one might be interesting in the item five. So if we can just uh, explain this by paragraph to a kind of the three structures, we can see that user one can reach to the item five a different kind of the path. Union is a very common and very popular framework to capture the high order relationship in the graph. It basically adapts the local matrix passing schema to capture the relationship. For example, consider an undirected graph, and we try to uh, compute the embeddings of the one target nodes. So basically, what is the GNNT is that it just aggregates information uh, from its neighborhoods. And also, sometimes we also keep the self loop relationship to preserve the password information of the node itself. And in the mathematical equations, uh, the passing, uh, passing schema is a very simple one. So we have two components. The first component is that we have a, a self loop information which just preserve the original features. We also uh, aggregate a message from its neighborhoods and both of the Informations can be transformed by some of the web matrix here, and we also uh, we just uh, add them together and with uh, some nonlinear uh, activation functions. So this is basically the 
uh, local methods of passing schemas for genome. And similar in the papara graph, we can have a, a DNA models for the users and items. For example, in the users, each time we just uh, uh, we get a message from a snap call as well as uh, the information about the node itself to update the user embeddings. And the sim similar strategy applied to the items, uh, we can update the item uh, representations by aggregate information from the item. So basically, the neighborhood of the users is just some item node, and the neighborhood of the item nodes is just some of the user nodes. So we then just keep uh, updating this kind of the embeddings by using some of the uh, message passing schemas. And there are three very common and popular frameworks for the Parallel Graph, uh, the GNN. But I think there's still some challenging for the GNN. So the first challenging is called the over smoothing and overfitting. So the the observation is something like this one. The known representations uh, will converge to the same values as the genome go very deep. So this is also one very serious of problems in the parallel graph. And the second change is that if we add some permutations to graph, the performance of the genome will be uh, dropped very quickly. So this is a uh, called like said is the low balance of the genome is also very weak. And the third change is that a node can only collect a message from the node label. So this is called a long range dependencies. Uh, it's also a very changing problems in how to design a powerful genome for the recommended systems. And in this work, we are going to try to introduce some of the non-local attentions to handle the long range dependencies problems. And the second part, now we are going to introduce our proposed frameworks called the non local genome to capture the long range dependencies. I think most of the genome only aggregate the information from its local nepal. So, in such a way, a KDS genome can only collect the relationship information up to the K power away. So, in this figure, as examples, we have a tacky node and a node of the interesting, like the node 9 here. And to collect information from the node 9, we need to using a four layers gene. And for example, the, uh, the, the information of the node 9 need to go to the node 4, and then go to the node 1, node 5, and then go to the target node 0 here. So which means that we have a, a four layers gene in order to collect the information message from the node 9. Uh, long range message is very important as we we're trying to capture the the very high order information between two nodes in the graph. Oh, one very straightforward way to capture the long range uh, dependency is just to increase the tip of the genome. Uh, as you can see that as well, uh, increase the, the number of the layers in the genome, we can capture very far away information uh, in the graph. But I think the deep genome caused a lot of issues. I think the first issue is that the DNA, uh, the deep genome will cause the overfitting and over smoothing issues, uh, as I explained before. And also the deep DNA might cause the uh, vanish gradients, so which is very hard to train. And also the complexity of the DNA is proportional to the number of layers, so which is not scalable to the very large graph. Even though now, now that the research can train the DNA over to the 1,000 layers, but I think in the practical or in the real world deployment, uh, only maybe four or three layers of the genome is used. So the question here is that can we just capture the long range message without increase the tip of the genome? There are some existing attention mechanics can handle this kind of the, the non-local uh, messages in the graph. For example, in the geo geometric GCN, just measure the pairwise non-non attention score. And as as, as long as we have the uh, attention mechanics, we can just press the long message uh, based on the attention map. But I think since it required to measure the pairwise no, no, and not uh, attention scout, it cost it required a quadratic complexity, which is not, not scalable for the last scale graph. Here's our proposed method called a GodNet uh, in this work. So in the graph, we trying to capture the long range message between the zero and the nine. In order to do that, in the first step, we just cast all node into a separate enjoy. 
and instead of the passing the message directly from the node 9 to node 4, 1, 5, and 0, we just pass the long message flow to the Sinjoy. As such, the complexity is linear to the number of the Sinjoy, which is uh, scalable to a large graph. So next, we're going to explain our algorithm step by step. So at the step one, we're trying to clasp the node in the genome space, which means that in each day of the genome, we have the embeddings for each node, and then we just apply some clustering technique to do the clustering, the representation of the Sinjoy. Uh, however, the clustering is not differentiable, uh, which is cannot be drawn training with the genome. In this way, we adopt some of the existing technique called optimal transport to approximate uh, this kind of the clustering technique. And it's interesting how how using this kind of optimal transport to approximate the climbing clustering, and uh, feel free to take up about this reference in the ICM uh, papers. And in the second step, uh, we just pass the long range message from the choice to the target node. So this is called a non local attention. For example, we have a target node 0 and the node of interest in 0, 9. So in the original lo local genome, we need to pass the message from the 9, 4, 1, 5, our framework, we can just pass the message of the 9 to the Sinjoy, and then we can just using some of the attention mechanics to, to pass the message from Sinjoy to the target node. So instead of the very expensive no no attentions, we can just using the Sinjoy and no attentions, which is uh, much cheaper. And, and finally, we just aggregate the information from both local and non local attentions. So which is something like the show in the graph. In the graph, we the first step, if we want to capture the embeddings of the users, we're using some of the automation support technique to class the user node into a different enjoy. And then we just can aggregate the information from this enjoy, as well as we also keep the original local aggregate information from uh, that is a uh, limbo host. So the benefit of our framework is that one single layer of each genome is able to capture all local non-local messages. And, and the second is that we need, didn't need, need to change the original start, designs of the genome. And this is, we call it local operators. Uh, it can just adopt the existing work like the light GCN. And the third is that we only have a very small cost to measure the non Enjoy attention uh, since the number of us enjoy is much uh, smaller than the number of the node. Uh, so basically, this is our entire framework. Uh, so we have a uh, users and items is kind of like local subgraph, and we're using cluster, we cluster users as well as cluster items. And we're just using some of miss up technique to miss up the local and non local representations to get the final representations. And the same technique can apply to the uh, item embeddings. As long as we have a user embedding and item embeddings, uh, we can just using some downstream uh, technique to get a final score to show if these users are interested in these items. In this work, we also do some experiments in the uh, sparse recommendations. Uh, the reason is that the local message passing schemas of the gene might be a problem uh, if I not only have a very few neighborhoods. Uh, to doing so, we just uh, perform uh, experiments on a sparse graph with the number of neighborhood is only in the range of uh, 5 to the 10. And this is the result for the Yelp and the Amazon book. As we can see that our, our goal net obtained the best performance. And the other thing we can see that most of the time, the non-local GCN can increase the performance of the, the GNN. The reason is that because when the number of the neighbor is very few, the local message passing schema cannot capture the enough information to update the embeddings in the graph. So, and thank you. And if you have any questions, feel free to uh, email me. And also, we are active uh, looking for full time researchers. And uh, if you, you are interested in visas, uh, feel free to just show me an email. Thank you.